When we first heard about this, we were a little bit confused as to how this would really fit into anybody's lifestyle. But since then, we've had this in the studio for about 2-3 to three weeks now and safe to say, we are still a little bit confused. But with all that said, we can think of a few unique scenarios and specific use cases in which this might just be the perfect monitor or TV for you. So let's talk about this. This is the LG Stand By Me. In a nutshell, the LG Stand By Me is a 27-inch monitor that can be connected wirelessly and be used off the grid and basically positioned wherever you want it to be. Now of course, there's more to it than that, but in essence, that pretty much sums up about 80% of what this is supposed to be. But let's start off by talking about the design, which in our opinion, is really elegant. The entire construction is pretty simple, with the large round base on the bottom, a sturdy vertical pole that acts as both your handle to move it around and to attach the monitor arm to, and of course, the monitor itself. Additionally, everything is finished in a really soft looking cream colour, which will easily complement any room and accentuate it. Speaking of the monitor itself, you have access to multiple adjustment options. You can rotate a full 180 degrees and use it in portrait mode, you can swivel up to 130 degrees, up to 50 degrees of tilt, and just about 20 centimeters in height adjustment. Moving on to the monitor itself, it's 27 inches as mentioned, utilizes an IPS panel, has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 running at 60 Hz, fully touch capable, and supports quite a number of features found in LG's lineup of TVs such as image enhancing, AI upscaling, HDR10 Pro, HLG, filmmaker mode, and more. All of that is thanks to the inclusion of an A7 Gen 4 processor, which is basically the same processor that can be found on their A1 and B1 series of OLED TVs, just without the 4K moniker. Flip around to the back of the monitor, and this is where you'll find it fully covered in a soft touch fabric material, which not only gives it a bit of character, but also being quite practical as well, as this is where you'll find the speakers. It's a 2.0 sound system that's capable of 10 watts of power. Now 10 watts does not sound like a lot, but we assure you that this thing can get plenty loud and easily fill a large room, but more on that later. There are still a couple of physical ports despite the wireless nature of this device. Underneath the soft tab will house a HDMI 1.4 port and a standard size USB port. Along the back edge is also where you'll find the NFC logo, which will allow you to wirelessly mirror content from any other device. Now it also does come with a remote which really makes it like a small TV, so this is going to prove handy if you're not near it to utilize the touchscreen but if say the remote isn't near you, you can also still adjust simple functions like volume via the back. But now back to the display itself and this is where things start to blur between monitor and TV because unlike any other monitor, this is going to run on webOS Smart which is basically the same software that you will find on LG TVs. The main homepage is going to be quite simplistic in nature. Right off the bat, you can access your favourite apps such as Netflix, HBO Go, YouTube, Spotify, Twitch and much more. All these come preloaded and arguably, it's probably going to be your main use of this device. You will also be able to easily toggle AirPlay, HDMI or USB input and you can easily see the time, the weather, temperature and more. We would say that the overall software experience is pretty intuitive whether you're just using the touchscreen alone or perhaps you're using the remote. But all in all, if you're used to any of LG TVs, this should feel right at home. As for the image quality itself, this isn't the best out there but it's definitely good enough. For a start, it's 1080p which isn't that fancy a resolution at 27 inches, especially when you consider monitors out there that have 1440p or 4K resolutions at the exact same screen size. But if you think about the use case of this monitor, it's actually plenty to work around with. Most of the time, you would simply be streaming Spotify to it to listen to music or perhaps mostly binging on YouTube or Netflix and the like. So in all those scenarios, you would mainly be just viewing content and in that regard, 1080p is honestly pretty fine. Colours are great and vibrant as expected from an IPS panel and it does also get plenty bright, perfectly usable in a large living room. Again, for its main use cases and the average viewing distance, 1080p is not too bad. We then come to the main advantage that this has over other monitors out there, the speaker system. As we have shared earlier, this is just a two-channel setup capable of 10 watts of power and it will support a variety of audio codecs wirelessly. The speakers on this are honestly really amazing. The highs and mids are clear and crisp and there's a little bit of bass despite the tin form factor. 
If you turn it up to a moderate volume for casual listening, it does feel a large living room relatively well and sounds comfortable in the sense that it's kind of like listening to music in a cafe. Not overbearing but yet still very enjoyable to listen to. If you want to up the volume however, you can definitely do that and this can get really loud. For context, what we would deem a comfortable listening volume would be somewhere between 10 and 20. Any more than that and it gets really loud to the point where you can kind of enjoy it like you're watching the latest blockbuster on your TV. It can really get loud, which is a plus point I guess. But now let's put that all aside and talk about why you would want to have such a monitor or TV per se. And honestly, we can really think of three main scenarios. The first is to use a secondary display in your living room, especially more so if one of your family members is hogging the TV. In this scenario, you basically don't need to share or be forced to watch content you don't want to watch. It's your own personal TV and you can basically use it wherever you please. The second scenario would be in your bedroom or study room. This can be used as a second monitor should you wish to do so. Or perhaps you just want a TV-like experience without sacrificing the space. Or perhaps your walls can't warm out anything. This will bring that versatility into the room. You can also choose to tilt it down and place it beside your bed if you want to swatch from the comfort of a blanket. You do you, this allows it. The last scenario that we can think of is in the kitchen and this will probably shine the best in an open kitchen design. So in that sense, you can just bring it over, place it beside the counter and you can prepare ingredients while watching a YouTube cooking tutorial or perhaps you can just flip it to portrait mode and use it like an extremely large recipe book. There are of course many other scenarios, but in most of them, if you're going to be restricted to a permanent working space or environment, you really wouldn't need the wireless freedom that this provides. A regular monitor setup would probably suffice. Which brings us to the shortcomings of the stand by me. First up, the battery life. Battery life is honestly quite poor. LG claims just about 3 hours of battery life and though we have managed to get more than that, nearing 4, it still isn't great. It's basically enough for you to watch one long movie or just barely enough for two short movies. Considering the size and heft of the base, we expected way higher battery life, at least 6 hours or so. But an average of 3 is what you're going to be working with and that's really a bummer. The next thing is the maximum height. At its highest position, this has a height of 1.26 meters in landscape mode or just under 1.4 meters in portrait mode. Basically, if you're using it standing, it's quite short. If you're going to be standing and using it, you'll find yourself looking downwards most of the time. Lastly, it's the price. Believe it or not, the Stand By Me retails for just under 1800 Singapore dollars, which translates to roughly 1300 US dollars. That is a lot of cash, no two ways about it. For that same amount of money, you can get a 55 inch 4K TV from LG themselves, or add a little bit more and you can get a slightly larger 65 inch 4K or upgrade to a 55 inch 4K OLED again from LG themselves. If you talk about other brands, you can get multiple TVs even. And if you compare to monitors, you can easily get really high refresh rate monitors at 1080p for half the price or up the resolution to 1440p while still enjoying high refresh rate or even get 4K. But of course, none of what we have mentioned can be used wirelessly or work off the grid and can't be placed wherever you want it to be, unlike this. So this is unique in that sense. But even so, for what this offers, the price is definitely still quite steep. You would say that a price of roughly 1300 Singapore dollars, which translates to roughly 900 to 1000 US dollars, would be definitely much more appealing. But it is what it is. To end it off, it really depends on what you're looking for. We do quite like it and definitely enjoyed it. But just understand that the LG Stand By Me, while pretty impressive, is still going to be quite the purchase. In any case, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. And if you would like to, do check out the affiliate links in the description as well. If you do, thanks for the support. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Till the next one. See ya!